Everyone stayed behind because oftentimes whenever the people wanted to know the direction of God in the Bible, especially in the Old Testament, in the, in the area of leadership, God, show us the direction, show us what we need to do, show us where we need to go, show us if we should go or if we should say, should we battle against our enemies or should we retreat, should we run or should we face them? Every single time that the people of God needed the direction from God, they went into fasting. Hallelujah. Fasting reveals the heart of God. It reveals unto each and every one of us what it is that is going on with our God. What is the mind of God? What is the revelation behind what it is that God is doing in this particular season? And so when we begin to discover the heart of God, we begin to discover the desire of God, we begin to discover the will of God, we begin to see that our faith has been strengthened. Because when I know what God is wanting to do in my life, I don't have to be afraid of an enemy that comes to try to lie to me about certain things that are going on in my life. What you don't know is that whenever you're praying and the presence of God begins to come down on you, what you don't understand when you are praying and you begin to feel those things beginning to move in your life is that God maybe is bringing that in order for you to have the ingenuity to begin to cancel your debt. Are you with me? But because we have no revelation behind that, because we've not entered into the heart of God, we leave it on the surface. And so God continually delivers to us all of these particular things, but the devil, because he knows that you've not heard, heard clearly from God, comes and begins to bring lies unto you. But if I understood the heart of God, there is no devil that can lie to me. There is no demon that can lie to me. If I understand the heart of God about my situation, if I understand the heart of God about my circumstances, then I'm not moved by the winds of this earth. I'm not moved by all the vicissitudes of life that I have to face on a day-to-day -day basis. It does not face me. It does not worry me. Pastor, everybody is getting laid off at my job, but what is God saying about you? Pastor, everybody in my family, it, it, it takes so long to get married, but what is God saying about you? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We oftentimes accept certain predicaments in our lives that the enemy brings to us and presents to us, and we say yes to him because we have no revelation of the truth that is in the heart of God. And so, as we hear the voice of God, our faith is boosted to a certain level where we, we cease to worry about the worries of life. We cease to worry about the circumstances that we have to face on a day-to-day basis. So the faith, uh, the, the fasting actually aligns us to the direction of God through faith. Are you with me? Fasting, when I fast, I begin to receive messages of the heart of God. It activates my faith to begin to walk according to the direction that God is walking in. Meaning that if God was walking along this line and I was walking perpendicular to him, hallelujah, I was going a different direction. When I begin to fast, it activates my spirit to begin to change directions, to begin to follow where God is walking. Why? Because I know where God will go next. It doesn't matter if he's moving in a different way or in a different season. I move along with him because I'm connected to the heart of God. Uh, is somebody with me this morning? Is this too much, old? <laughs> so I want you to understand that there's different levels. There's different levels of fasting. The, the, the passage that we read in the book of Matthew is found also in the book of Mark. It's also found in the book of... Um, in the book of Luke, in the, in the Synoptic Gospels, the Synoptic Gospels are, you know, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, right? So we, we find the, uh, the, the particular story uh, of the temptation of Jesus. The, the reason I was able to uh, focus on the book of Matthew in particular is because of the fact that I found that uh, 
Matthew actually focuses more on the root of the mess messianic mission of Christ Jesus. Now, we'll get into that here in a little bit, but I want you to begin to, to understand that this particular scripture gives us an indication that fasting, that fasting triggers our ability to enter into a particular dimension of faith that is able to destabilize the devil in the midst of his operation. When we read about Jesus being tempted of the devil, at the end of the story, we see that Jesus is able to rebuke the enemy. Why? Because of the fact that he was in a position of fasting. He was in a position of being in the presence of God so that every single word that he began to speak out had authority over the devil. Hallelujah. Amen. Understand this. There's, there's many different kinds of fasting. This is not my purpose today. Uh, I, I want you to begin to discover the root, the things that happen when we begin to fast. Because we can speak about, uh, there's the normal fast that we're accustomed to. Whenever Jesus is fasting for 40 days and 40 nights, when we read in the scripture, and particularly in the book of Luke, Luke um, makes sure that he indicates that he was hungry at the end of the 40 days, meaning that he, he did not eat, but Jesus drank during the 40 days. Amen? Amen? Amen. So he drank water, but he did not eat. So at the end of the fasting, he was hungry. There, that, that's the general normal fast. We can do a partial fast, what we oftentimes refer to as the, uh, the Daniel fast. That's considered a partial fast. When you read in Daniel chapter 10, I believe verse 9 or so, you'll see where Daniel begins to fast according to, to a particular diet that he assigns himself. He's only eating vegetables. He's only eating legumes. He's only eating those particular things that come from the ground. Or we can see Paul in the book of Acts, chapter 9, verse 9. You read where Paul had a complete fast. A complete fast is where Paul went for three days with no eating, no drinking whatsoever. Hallelujah. So there's different levels of fasting. There's different kinds of fasting depending on what it is that you feel in your heart. But all in all, all of the fasts are meant to bring our faith to a particular level of being connected with God. The devil has never been afraid of you fasting. But the devil is afraid of how you believe. Are you with me? The devil will never, never ever be afraid of how you fast. But he fears how you begin to believe. Fasting brings us to the heart of God. When I'm in the heart of God, my belief system begins to grow. Because I know exactly what God is going to do. God is not a man to lie, nor a son of man to repent. Meaning that everything that God thinks of, he will do. Oh, somebody's not hearing me this morning. See, there, there is gods in this earth that will tell you, I will give you money. After a season or two, uh, they can't provide anymore because they are limited. But I'm talking about the limitless God. I'm, I'm not talking about that God that was able to fall before the Ark of the Covenant named Dagon. I'm, I'm talking about the God who's never failed any battle. I'm talking about the God who created the heavens and the earth. I'm talking about the God who says yes and nobody can say no. Oh, hey, am I talking to somebody? Else? I'm, I'm talking about the God who sheltered you whenever you should have been dead and gone. I'm, I'm talking about the God who covers you no matter how many enemies. He said 10,000 to your left, 1,000 to your right. You will never ever be, oh, with God, you will always be the majority. That's the God that I'm talking about. I can be alone in front of a thousand enemies as long as I have my God, my one God, one God can destroy a multitude of enemies. One God can, can erase a multitude of issues. One God, only one God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You know what they used to do back in the days? They used to gather all kinds of God. They used to call uh, the God of, 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 I don't know, the stars, and the God of the, the sun, and the God of this, and the God of that, and the God of this, and the God of that. David said that they have their God. They have ears, but they cannot hear. They have eyes, they cannot see. Uh, what kind of 
God, see, I love you African who, who will bring all these wooden things that can be thrown in the fire and be consumed. Hallelujah. Oh, this is my God. I, I put him on the mantel of my, my house, uh, on top of the fireplace. If you have an accident and he falls into the fire, he's gone. You hold your head. But my God that I serve, the Bible calls him the consuming fire. The Bible calls him the fire that never burns out. He, he will never end. He is the beginning and the end. The beginning in the end and the end in the beginning. The alpha end. He never changes. He never loses. He never falters. That's the God that I'm talking about. One day I'll present him to you. Because it seems like you still don't know him. That's why I call him dad. I, I know him like that. I come in this room. You know you can only talk about a daddy that you know. If, if I call him my daddy, it means that I have access to things that other people don't have access to. Hallelujah. What my daddy gives me for my birthday. That's why people get jealous of you. Because of the relationship that you have with daddy. Oh, just, uh. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's the type of God that we serve. So the assurance that we have when we begin to discover the heart of our God. The devil does not fear how it is that you begin to fast. What he's afraid of is how you begin to believe and what he will fight. This is why when you begin to, uh, to fast, you will always find yourself, you, you, you begin to shake. I, I don't know if I'm going to make it. I don't know if I'm going to make it. I, I'm going to die. I remember the first time that I fasted, I slept the whole day. I slept up. I, I couldn't even stand up. My grandma came. I don't know. <laughs> I was 16 years old. And my grandma said, you know what? I fast every Wednesday. This Wednesday, you're going to fast with me. Uh -huh. I said, okay. All right. I didn't know what I was getting myself into. And we were supposed to fast from morning all the way till 6 p.m. Not knowing, my grandma used to love to work in the backyard. She would wake up early in the morning and she would begin to pick all the weeds by hand out of the backyard. And so she called me, she said, I know we're fasting today, but I need your help. In the middle of the summer, no breakfast, no lunch, the sun beating down on me. Beloved, I felt like somebody had been torturing me for the whole day. And by the time I got into the house, I showered and I slept 